What's going on everyone? In this episode we're going to worry about the front end. So we're going to be able to submit our new order for a customer. Definitely check out the previous video. We built the mutation to make this happen in GraphQL. Now we just have to do the easy part, which is connect everything. So here is our application and we already built this form, which will allow us to add a new order from a customer. So, you know, let's say this guy bought some networking equipment. I helped install, ran some wire, whatever. You can make the description however you like. The cost, this was $250. So we want this to connect to our GraphQL endpoint, and right now it's currently doing nothing. So it's just console logging those values. So I had this massive internal debate of where I wanted to put this use mutation hook because you know we could keep it in this parent page passing any information down to the component rendering this form which we could then invoke any passed in functions on this on submit so that's certainly a way of doing it one of the challenges with that though is I couldn't think of a very easy way to manage independent loading values for the different forms and independent error values it's probably possible uh I don't know. I don't feel like trying it. So let's go ahead and just do the use mutation inside of this component, which will work just the same. And then we don't have to worry about passing stuff down through props anyways. So it's going to be a lot easier. So we're back here in app.tsx. And what we're going to do is we are going to basically copy some of this code for this mutation. For this, we are going to need to define the query. So we will use this as an example, copying this use mutation, which we are going to need to import. So we will import use mutation and GQL from Apollo client. And then we will define our query string inside of these GQL quotes. So let's first bring over our use mutation. So I'll define that here. And then let's define a query, which I will also use this as an example. So we will copy that and let's paste that here. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and do the appropriate imports from Apollo client. And we're also going to need use mutation. And now we just have to use the correct query. So we already have mutate. Okay, that's going to work. And then this refetch queries, we're not going to worry about that for this moment. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we can just get rid of this other argument passed in. So this is what it'll look like. Now let's alter what we are actually doing we are going to be creating an order so we'll just modify the function which is create order now and we no longer need to rename these since we're not doing any other queries in this page we're not going to get any naming issues so we'll just say loading error and data now let's update our query so instead of create customer this is going to be create order and we can refer back to graphical to grab one of these mutations to see what this structure should look like. So it's going to be pretty similar to this. So let's go ahead and we'll paste that in these quotes here. We will just need to add the types here. So we'll start by saying mutate data and then define what types we need. So we will first start with the description, which is going to be a string and it's required. Then we will have the cost in cents. I believe this will be int. And then lastly, we will have the customer ID. So customer, and this will be int. Now we will substitute those here. Instead of having a one, we can have dollar sign customer. Same for the description and total in cents. So we'll have description. And then lastly, for total in cents, we will use total in cents. And I actually realize I have a inconsistency here, so we'll change this to total in cents. And just looking through this, any other potential issues, customer, I believe actually should be ID, not of type int. And we're not going to know if this is 100% right until we actually invoke it. So let's go ahead and take this create order function and use it in our on submit. So we'll say create order and I'm going to get rid of this console log. Inside of here, we will pass an object with a variables property, which will be another object. Inside of here, we will define each one of those. So the customer is going to be 
customer ID. And then we will have the description, which will be come from the description we have. And then lastly, the total in cents is going to come from this one down here, which we defined as cost. So there again, I am with the inconsistency of naming. So let's go ahead and instead of using cost here, I actually just want to keep everything consistent. So let's go ahead and say total, 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 and adjust the state variable as well. So total, total, <laughs> and total, and let's go rename that state as well. So we have total here and set total. Last thing is total and cents will now be total multiplied by 100 since we're typing it in as a dollar amount on the front end. So the user doesn't need to know it's stored as cents. All right, so now let's check to see if this query is working correctly by submitting a request. So over in our page, we will do a test and this is going to have 500 add order and you can see that query did go through and we get the order back so far so good now when we refresh the page you can see our test and cost 500 we'll try it again for the other customer just to make sure everything is working the way we expect so let's create a new order testing 350 cents add order the request went through we do a refresh and you can see it there. Now, before we talk about refreshing the page information, I want to talk about improving the overall experience with this form, specifically adding in the loading and the error. And here's what we're going to do. After our form, we will put an error. So let's go one below the form and say, if there's an error, we'll just make a, a paragraph saying something went wrong. Otherwise, null and very similar to what we did in the other form we will do a disabled so to see what that looks like we have this disabled and then a ternary returning true or false so let's do that we will have a button add order with the property disabled and this if it's loading we will return true otherwise false that should do the trick so the way we can check if the query was successful is to monitor the data variable which was returned from use mutation. So we can set up a use effect. If data has a value, then we know something was returned and the query was good. So we will say use effect and pass in a function. And this is going to be dependent on data. And let's go ahead and import use effect right here and let's just go ahead and console log data for now and we will then set description to an empty string and set total to not a number and we only want to do this if data has a value so if it's changed to undefined or something else we don't want to execute any of this so if data then we will do all of these things. So let's test out a working case. So we'll go in here, type in test and give some value, say five. We add an order, the form is cleared and we are returning some data. Let's try it again with a broken case. Let's say we have some typo in our query and we'll try it again. So testing total value of 30. We add order, says something went wrong, and the form is not cleared. Now you might be wondering now, how do we get the information on the page to update automatically when we add a new order? Especially when that original query to get all of the orders is in the parent component. So first off, make sure this query is good so we don't have that problem lingering. And we can execute this same exact query on a refetch queries, this one defined here. And because GraphQL Apollo client has an internal cache for our application, this will update the data and actually cause it to be re-rendered without having any reference to the parent component, which is actually pretty cool. So to see this, what we'll do is we will bring this query over to this child component, get data, and then 
on our use mutation, we will pass in an additional object, which is going to be very similar to what we did earlier, where we have refetch queries, and that's going to be an object with a query, and then you pass in that query. So let's go ahead and copy this object, or feel free to type it out, and we will paste that here. And now let's save and test it out. Here we are on the site. We will add a new order. Say we fixed doors and we charged $200. We'll add the order and it's automatically added to the list. Pretty flippin' sweet if you ask me. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. I've definitely enjoyed how far we've come, but there's so much more we could do with GraphQL. If you've enjoyed this content, please be sure to subscribe. We would appreciate if you check out the next video. Peace out.